After the 2008 subprime crisis, many questioned the ability of the financial industry and its professionals to deal with ethical dilemmas. Some studies blamed the culture of dishonesty in banking, uh, and others focused on inappropriate use or lack of codes of conduct that could prevent unethical behavior such as fraud. We wanted to assess how much has actually changed since then in terms of compliance with rules specified in a code of conduct within the wealth management industry. Do wealth managers understand ethical dilemmas in their professional practice and follow the bank's code of conduct? Do their answers depend on their personal characteristics and on whether they value truthfulness in particular? Uh, to answer these research questions, we designed an online survey for wealth managers at a large international bank, BNP Paribas, focusing specifically on its Swiss wealth management business unit. The survey was composed of 40 situational judgment questions that we designed together with compliance and business management. The participants had to express how likely they are to choose a certain action in a given situation on a scale from zero, I would definitely not do that, to 100, I would definitely do that. Questions pertain to two areas of the code of conduct, clients' interest and financial security, or both of these areas. And they were of two types, questions with a clear-cut correct answer, the unambiguous questions, and ambiguous questions in the ethical gray zone for which no clear answer exists. In those dilemmas, the respondents had to decide based on personal discretion. We also used a validated psychometric questionnaire to measure the participants' protected values for truthfulness, that is, the degree to which a person cares about the truth and about being truthful in the presence of monetary benefits associated with cheating. The main results obtained from a sample of 89 wealth managers show that compliance with the rules of financial security was their number one decision-making criterion for all situation judgment questions, including those about clients' interest. Accuracy in unambiguous questions was high at around 80% in both domains, but it was significantly higher if a question was framed as financial security, even if the situation proposed a trade-off between clients and banks' interest. This was therefore evidence of a framing effect, possibly due to a higher attention elicited by the label financial security. Second, the tendency to choose pro-integrity in ambiguous situations was generally high, with scores above 80 out of 100. The strongest predictor of pro-integrity choices in dilemma situations was having high protected values for truthfulness. This predictor was even more important than knowledge of the rules and regulations measured by unambiguous questions. And none of the demographic predictors, such as uh, gender, tenure with the company and the industry, education, nor variable compensation played a role here. The implications of this first study on the determinants of the expected effectiveness of a code of conduct post-global financial crisis are the following. First, the wealth manager's decisions are primarily driven by regulatory compliance. Second, we show how situational judgment questions can be used to measure the expected effectiveness of injunctive norms in a code of conduct. Third, we expose the role of protective values for truthfulness in guiding choices in areas where these norms are ambiguous. We recommend that financial institutions be aware of the language used in their code of conduct as rules may seem more flexible in clients' interest and stricter in the financial security frame. To enhance the effectiveness of the code in ethical grey zones, we suggest to assess new employees' levels of protected values for honesty, for instance, using the questionnaire we used, in the hiring process. Third, as a strategic recommendation, the code of conduct should emphasize that clients' interest is not necessarily mutually exclusive with financial security, if consistently understood, communicated and managed. This is important given that wealth management as a banking activity should remain service and thus client-focused.